this session is going to be something like uh, you have flex clients and uh, you have your backend objects and uh, this is a tool by a company called Midnight Coders and this tool will act as an interface between your client and your server. So you can probably have a look at their site so that This is the Midnight Coders page and uh, this is their product called Webot and I am here to give you an overview as what is Webot and what are those features, what features do they have and how can we use those features to ease our development. So uh, we are from Gravitin Technologies and uh, I work on the .NET part and a couple of guys here I work on the flex part, majorly. So this is the agenda. It's going to be where does that do WebOp fit in into the whole picture. The features of WebOp and uh, there are three levels of interfaces that WebOp provides and I'm going to take remoting in detail. It's full of customization. I mean the, the product is full of customization. That's why it's still in the market. You have couple of competing products to it but this is the number one currently. The reason behind it is each and every level you can customize using an XML file. They have a couple of config files and you can configure each and everything as how it works. A deeper look inside as how it works and a couple of demos. Demos meaning it's just the, the code. It, it, I'm not going to take you to the flex screens again. And uh, finally, I mean it saves a lot of money and a uh, couple of queries last. So this is the entire. Uh, this is how it looks. So basically, this is this is your. It supports. It, it is going to act as a framework between your clients and the server, as I said before. And on the client side, it could be either a flex client or a flash or an Ajax or a Silverlight or it can be even used to stream media. So the way it works is. You, you usually how do we go about with this? I mean, you have your flex and you write a couple of web services. You do an HTTP service. You get the request, get the response. I mean, send the request, get the response, and show it. Here it's slightly different. What you are going to do is you have your flex clients on the client, flex or a flash client, and it is going to talk to your web board. And that the board will internally talk to, I mean, it will talk to your .NET libraries or Java. On the server side, it supports Java. As of now, it supports Java, supports .NET, Ruby, and lot more. So internally, the, the communication that's going to happen to the web board and your flex is going to be, they have implemented it in AMS. And they also have R, RDMP uh, messaging. So the the way it works, I mean, you have your .NET assemblies, and you put your .NET assembly. This this web app is going is, is nothing but a virtual directory that sits on your server. So all your flex clients will talk to the virtual directory. The virtual directory is configured to read each of the requests that comes from here. Whatever request that goes from the flex client, we have something called webdoc.aspx. So there will be the whole magic is with the HTTP handlers that they have written over here. So those HTTP handlers will understand that the, the request is from one of their counterparts and it will start config. It, it's the normal way. How do you make a request to your server and how do you get back? You make a request, you do a HTTP request and it starts perform. You have a lot of handlers. So in, in one of those handlers will be our web app handler which will handle and I mean, it will direct a response to a different way. Say there are a lot of HTTP handlers, your web app handler will sit somewhere here and it will start directing how the flow should happen. So it's for developing and running rich client applications. It's for the connectivity of all your RIAs with all your server side assets. The client side it supports as of now Flex, Flash, Ajax, Silverlight and on the server side it's .NET, Java, PHP, Rails, etc. It implements switch client system also. It's for uh, uh, connecting your JavaScript with your .NET. It, it helps there. It can be hosted in a standalone mode as well as a hosted mode. Standalone mode meaning a normal desktop application without a virtual directory. So, 
and the whole set mode is like you you have your web app on a virtual directory and uh, that's how it works. And again, as I said before, the web or HTTP handlers do all the planning for you. So this is the architecture of how how a request happens and how it comes. So you have a security layer lying on the side. And as you go each and every level, you can configure the security thing. It will go to the security layer, it will get its response and back and then decide whether to go out or not. Go to the next level or not. So you get, usually on the .NET side you have a HTTP handler, on the Java side you have a servlet, web of servlet. It comes in, then you have a couple of protocols sitting there and the, the, the protocols and the dispatch that happens below is totally separated. So it waits for the next, the first free protocol and it takes the protocol and then it goes, deserializes, makes it into an object, request object. The request object comes down to dispatchers. You have a couple of dispatchers here. So either a service inspector or a service invoker. Invoker meaning an object invoker. It's going to invoke an object. The service inspector is going to check whether you have rights, you have, I mean, are you authenticated, are you authorized to perform the action. Those kinds go into the service inspector and service invoker is going to create the object for you. After that it goes to the handler. It could be either a local handler or a web service or any custom handler. You see customs everywhere. It's all configurable. It's all configurable with the use of XML files. You, you will, they, they give you an interface. You need to override the interface and and then you take it in an XML file and you configure it in an XML file that I'm, sir, I'm here and you please use me as you go along. 